So, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to California. And welcome to Gunther Works HQ here in Huntington Beach. Now today, we are gonna take you through the journey of how Gunther Works go from this to this. We're gonna be catching up with Nick, we're gonna be catching up with Peter, and we're gonna take you through the damn near miracles that take place in this building over here. As you drive up to it, it's relatively unassuming, but now we've got these two cars side by side. I've been really fortunate over the last few days to spend a lot of time with the team from Gunther Works, and it's not until we've arranged this situation right here that the transformation is near jaw-dropping. It is dramatic. So, without further ado, let's head inside and show you through the intricate processes, engineering, and mind thinking behind this incredible brand. Yes, dude. Good to see you. James, good to see you. How you been? Mate. Good, Last welcome. Few days welcome have been to Gunther Phenomenal. Good, um, glad. Honestly, it's been fantastic. We had, we had the honor a few months ago uh, to, towards the end of last year to drive your coupe and to be here and get a feel for the company and the brand and what you do in house is fantastic. So much so that we, we've, we've politely asked them if we can give you guys a full tour because I don't think the world knows what you're doing here. Uh, it's unbelievable what you do under one roof. Well, I appreciate it. We're excited to have you here today. It is pretty remarkable out of a, essentially a 30,000 square foot facility, <laughs> what cool. we're able to do here. So yeah. let's head okay, out. Cool. Let's go take a let's look at it. one of the donors of the disassembly process. And okay. you can see the whole build process of a Gunther Works 911. Sounds good. And if you're just tuning in to this, uh, we've actually done a full walk and talk on the new turbo, which is unbelievable. So there's a link below to the full video of this. So now we're going to find out how you make them. This is it. So this is our assembly and disassembly area. It's pretty amazing to see the assembly line on the left side of the shop, but then on the right side is where we do all of our disassembly. So what we start off with is a 1995 through 98 Porsche Carrera C2 manual. The clients will actually source the donors on their own and will bring it in for the remastered process. Okay. Um, so we kind of assist them during that donor acquisition uh -huh. of looking for a clean donor. One of the biggest things that when we start the actual process is a good base of the car. So it's really okay. crucial to make sure that the frame's straight on the car. Uh -huh. um, we look for cars that are actually higher mileage okay. with original paint, just so we know that the chassis is what's it's still good, good go. on the car. Right. Um, in addition to that, we actually look for complete cars because there's a lot of systems mm -hmm. that are still utilized within the car okay. that will retain during the actual production process here. So right. once received in, we'll go through a roughly a 100 point inspection on the actual donor. And then once that's complete, we'll disassemble the car and we'll actually get every component off of the chassis all the way down to the bare steel chassis. So you strip everything out. Every inch of it is stripped out. All the carpets, all the glues, engine, transmission, subframes, every Absolutely. inch of this. It goes back to day one. Back to day one. Wow, and then is there a specific treatment for the chassis once it's bare and exposed? There is, so yeah. once we actually have it fully disassembled, you'll still have the original paints on it. The glues mm -hmm. are usually still stuck to the actual right. chassis. So uh -huh. we'll send those out to Media Blast and get right. all that paint corrosive material off of the vehicle so we know what the true condition of the steel is. Right. Again, going back to what I just mentioned that we really gotta make sure we have a good base of the car. Uh -huh. And so when they actually come back from Media Blast, we'll do another inspection on the chassis where we'll tram gauge and make sure everything's square to factory Porsche specifications. So this is a chassis that's come back from Media Blast. Um, now we've gone through, like I said, we've tram gauged it, but at this stage, what we're going through is we fill in a lot of the um, holes and mounting brackets within the vehicle that are no longer used. So again, we're increasing okay. the rigidity of the chassis anywhere we can. All I right. think you've seen on the Winchester coupe that you saw yeah. a couple months ago, uh -huh. and even within the turbo wise, yeah. you see how clean our engine bay is. Super fresh. Yeah. There's, there's so like many no cabling or anything. It's like, how did you do that? How you did know? we do that? How did you do that? There's so many little details that uh -huh. are 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 done ahead of time right. that prepares us for that installation. So as you see where a technician is grinded away and smoothed out the whole engine bay where mounts used to be. One big thing is the stamping that came for the rear bumper shelf here, mm -hmm. it was wavy. 
And so one of our big things is, again, we want it to be perfectly smooth. So we'll go back through and completely Serious? rework it. So from factory, this has got a wave in it? It's got a wave in no it. Way. Naturally, it has well, a, little, a little wave in okay. it. So we go through, we completely straighten it out, in through the, the actual frame rails as well. Prep work is bonkers. It's mate. bonkers, yeah. <laughs> it's it, bonkers. It's, it takes about okay. six weeks you serious? just to do one chassis. Yeah. So one of the things I got to bring up and ask you on it, and just, just from a personal note, I noticed the like lack of scuttle shake, the torsional rigidity of the speeds that I was genuinely surprised at. So I'm thinking, like I, I was aware that it was still fundamentally based on an original 993 chassis. The rigidity of it was impressive, man. How, how'd you do that? Because I don't see anything <laughs> that, that suggests why yet. Yeah, so the next process after uh -huh. we've actually prepped our chassis is our frame strengthening for the Speedster. So let's okay. go take a look at okay. a chassis that has that all done. So you have a, sp a specific stage for that? We do, yeah, we do. Right. So uh, each build process, there's a specific stage in that build process that a vehicle will go through. Mm -hmm. So we first partnered up with our suspension engineer, Kerry Eisenlord from ERP Components, okay. cool. and then a gentleman named Trevor Harris. Now, right. for, for some of the guys across the pond, you might uh -huh. not know who Trevor Harris is. Uh, yeah. Here in America, we have IndyCar. Uh, yeah. IndyCar is our open wheel racing, and Trevor Harris was an engineer for IndyCar back in the 70s and 80s, and there's a really cool photo of Trevor going down Indianapolis on top of the intake of an Indy car, right. doing like a hundred, and he's trying to detect a vibration. It is an amazing <laughs> photo uh, wow. that really okay. should be showcased. But uh, Trevor and Kerry um, spent months actually uh, twisting chassis, and what we did was we built a jig and bolted a cabriolet chassis to the ground, and through our jig we were able to twist the chassis and to a specific specifications that we wanted to set. Right. And we twisted the, the cabriolet chassis and ran the numbers and then uh -huh. we twisted a coupe chassis. Yeah. And what we found was the coupe was about two thirds stronger than the cabriolet. Okay. And so we started thinking, okay, it's where- It's quite a chunk, huh? It's quite, a, quite chunk. a chunk, okay. And so yeah. wow. we wanted to bring that up or sure. even exceed that. So what Trevor saw was, again, where you would have your typical C and B mm -hmm. pillar coming off of a coupe, mm -hmm. missing that in the cabriolet, you really saw a lot of twist and, and you know, deflect within the chassis moving. And so what we designed was this brace that you see that's been mounted into the rear seat. Wow. What this brace does is it actually stiffens the whole rear of the chassis and it gives support to our carbon tunnel cover that sits on top we were able to increase the yeah. structural rigidity by 150%. We're almost double what a coupe was now. And you think, okay, we do all this. Yeah. It's gonna add weight. I was about to ask you. It's gonna add weight. Yeah, it's gonna add weight. The Speedsters are roughly about yeah. 50 pounds lighter than the coupes, Come even with on, these additional man. components. Really? So it's pretty remarkable. That's impressive. So once this stage is complete, once we've had the chassis completely at its final um, prepping, that's when we start our paint and body process. So um, what I'd like to actually step over is, yep. let's go look at some of the carbon components that we utilize within ah, the body of it. Something you kind of forget that all, everything that you see on the outside of the car is carbon, right? That is wow, correct. Look at the finish on this, look at this. How cool is that? Wow. So the guys are polishing up one of the front fenders or wings for you guys wings. in, in yeah. Europe here. So, <laughs> Um, but all the carbon parts are all pre prigged they're all autoclave carbon fiber. And you guys make this in-house, right? This is all made in-house. So, um, to talk a little history about our carbon production, because that's uh -huh. really one of our core values of Gunther Works. Sure. So, our sister company, Vorsteiner, has been around for a little over 20 years now, yeah. uh, specifically doing add-on carbon components for European exotic cars. Mm -hmm. uh, we're really kind of big in the BMW and Lamborghini platform. Yeah. And, when Peter Nam started the company, one of our core values was our carbon production and the quality of our carbon, uh, and being that we do everything in-house for it. So this front fender is a pre-pregged autoclaved carbon piece, mm -hmm. and I'll let you pick it up. So, yeah. That's ridiculous. So you can see, yeah. That is ridiculous. For a size of a part size like of that, yeah, that's about six pounds. You know, one of the things that's very difficult to convey on film is weight. Yeah. Take it from me, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, it's, well, there you go, that's... And that's where we go, yeah. So in total for the coupes, we shave right around 600 pounds 
Um, so a factory Porsche 993 Carrera C2 is oh. right around 3,300 pounds. Right. Our coupes get down to right around 2,700 pounds. So significant weight reduction. And then later we'll talk about the engine, but the power to weight of these things is distinctly smile inducing. It's, it's, it's really yeah. cool. So. Wow. I All think right. it's also cool as it's in this angle right now, you see yeah. how wide it is. It's huge. So it's yeah. three inches wider than a factory 993. Each okay. corner, three inches three wider. Three inches. Three inches. So that, that allows <laughs> us, again, that 18 yeah. by 11 in the front, that 18 by 13 in the rear. Um, as, as Amjad had presented to you in the Winchester video, yeah. one of the core things that as we developed the car was really built around the chassis of the car. You know when you see like, like an artist's impression of, of an exaggerated 911 shape and it's almost a caricature of itself because it's got such phenomenal yeah. flares and like amazing stance, you make it, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. The thing that blew me away with the turbo, you know, I saw the renders a few months back and oftentimes you'll see renders and you'll be, oh, that's nice that, you know, but what's it really going to look like? Yeah. Millimeter, the, the, like you made the concept almost. It's crazy, man. Yeah, that's kind yeah. of, it's always yeah. been a fun thing. Uh, yeah. Last year when we launched our Speedster, it uh -huh. was that same kind yeah. of mindset where we were so shocked <laughs> of how well you it transferred from it. rendering crazy. Yeah, yeah. To, to fully functioning car. And wow. um, we start, and that's, it's kind of keeping with that. It's, mm. we don't want to compromise. We know through our testing, um, through CFD testing, that how well all those components in those shapes are gonna work, that we need to be able to replicate that in the production aspect. Sure. Um, it's pretty incredible that we go from the design concept that you saw there to a production right. aspect yeah, of yeah. it. So, it's wild. so James, let's go take a look at one of our actual turbo prototypes that's actually in production. So you saw the first prototype. This is our second prototype that we're working on right, right now. Right. So again, going back to structurally, the car still stay mm -hmm. uh, and an original vehicle mm -hmm. that we will bond on the roof and it'll bond in through the A pillar and through the C pillar. And then the quarter panels will actually get bonded on through the quarter window uh, and then goes all the way through the side skirt. So, um, structurally wise, it still retains all those mm -hmm. uh, OE sure. components, but every other ounce of it is carbon on the exterior of it. Yeah, you, you can see it all in here. I mean, it's starting to flare out with this new arc. Yeah. It's so cool. So cool. as the body team is working through that six to nine month process, uh -huh. we have the rest of our team doing some of the other sub assemblies and development projects. So let's go take a look cool. at some of the other assets. Right. So I want to actually introduce you to Adam, our engineer. It's very cool to see all the paint and body process, but I want to talk about some of the components from what they start off as, as an idea, to the finished product, which you'll see on the production line. Right, cool. So let me uh, hand you off to Adam here. All right, man. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you, man. Nice to meet you, man. So yeah, I mean, when it comes to the Speedster mirrors, obviously we had the car at the Quail uh, last uh -huh. year, so there was some mirrors on the car then. Um, the, the design intent was there, but perhaps the you know functionality and production intent wasn't 100% buttoned up, so right. we've been working on that since. We're doing our design concept, so you've got to obviously factor in something that's either, sorry, the key factors being either aesthetic uh -huh. and or functional, sure. right? So right. you've got to work on both. Uh, you know, the things that are hard to convey on camera, like mm -hmm. weight and the feel of something. Yeah, yeah. The feel of of it man it does so you could have got this it, from a jewelry store it's, you know? it's just, amazing it's yeah. not just obviously with the um you know being billet aluminum the three main components there that obviously adds a bit of like you know physical mass and heft to it so it feels really good in your hand uh -huh. and this one with a nickel plated finish just gives it like you said a bit of a jewelry like look to it so you know on the car those really pop quite nicely i said we've got a hundred millimeter convex mirror there so we can get a reasonable you know field of view from such a small package so. i'd leave that on my desk just for a bit yeah, of like yeah, an ornament yeah, it's yeah, so I keep, I, good looking i've kept one in here since since we got the first ones off the machine so yeah nice work <laughs> man man these plugs are heavy they're heavy yeah yeah the <laughs> plugs got some weight behind it super heavy uh, so right. what you have is um the latest addition to project tornado which is going to be our touring seat um, that we're going to offer uh and then the coming months and uh, we loved the initially on the sports seat that we first developed that hollow uh, integration within the carbon production we wanted to still retain that but we wanted to uh, create a little bit better ergonomics for long distance driving mm -hmm. in addition you'll notice there's a lot more padding mm -hmm. throughout the seat um, but still keeping that hollow construction. But it's pretty wild that you lift up the plug and then come lift up a production it is part. Worlds apart, I'm sure. Let's have a feel on this. 
That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. So James, let's go over and take a look at our electronics department and go over some of the harness and some of the other new projects that we're working on. Wow. So Jacob, our electrical engineer, has doing? been working on our latest steering wheel for Project Tornado. This is sexy. So this, this is a cool. multifunction steering wheel. Uh -huh. Now on the original Coupe and Speedster, we integrated the nose lift onto the dash. And then in the center console, we have our sport button that adjusts the mapping on the ECU. Right. We wanted to minimize any uh, offhand movement while you're driving. So we wanted to integrate those functionalities into the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. So mm. here's the pre-production one. Okay. If you want, pick it up. So this is like representative of the real thing. <laughs> that is a real carbon steering wheel. Now, what we're developing is our own clock spring. Now, when Porsche initially developed the car, yeah. the uh, clock spring didn't have the electronic pass-through until okay. the 993 Turbo on the second generation. So around 97 is when they okay. came out with multifunction steering wheel with an Crazy. electronics going through. Right. So okay. now we're trying to integrate the functionality of the nose lift and sport functionality sure. through that clock spring, and then we'll create our own hub assembly. So as you just experienced with Adam, them on our 3D uh -huh. printing, the team has gone ahead and actually 3D printed our own hub. Um, again, you see a lot of this notching effect throughout the car yes. in addition with the X. Uh -huh. um, that's really kind of a symbolic um, meaning throughout the vehicle. But it's all been 3D printed and then it, again, oh, they're actually working. They actually oh. work. So. And you created this stuff in house. This is all in house. All in house. All in house. That's crazy. So, man. as you guys see, Jacob's working on right now, he's it's working on mate. that box spring. It's got to be quite a liberating thing to be able to do that much creativity under one roof you know oh, to yeah, to, oh let's just try this how about this you know yeah and it's cool going from full start to finish and then being able to get our prototypes uh -huh. test them on the car and then uh, eventually be able to see it in production and it's, uh, it's yeah like you said very, very cool. liberating yeah very cool yeah. wow that's awesome man i just think it's so it's so cool that you do it under one roof just create what what you want you know don't have to wait for suppliers or you know we can't other people outside telling you what you can or can't do effectively. It's yeah. Like, let's just do it. <laughs> yeah. And every aspect of it, sure. you know, yeah, yeah. from That's again, it. thought process to, you know, prototyping to production. It's sure. pretty, pretty remarkable. So James, this is our clean room where we do our headlight and taillight assembly. Whoa. The big things was we wanted to have by LED uh, headlights. Okay. We wanted to have LED DRLs and then LED taillights. Um, but we still wanted to package that in a design element that still flowed with the vehicle, still right. reminiscent of the, the original headlight that would have been in the car, but with, again, the modernization of that. So what you guys see here is essentially our final product of a Guntherworks remastered headlight. Um, starting off, so we still utilize the factory uh, rear bucket of the headlight, okay. but every other component's brand new in it. Yes, and again, the little dude, details with the GW logo laser engraved. It's pretty awesome. So that is a bi-LED projector that has an external module that'll power up the system. And so that's once that's all installed, this carbon bucket closes out the actual housing there. And we actually have a couple different options for this. So you can do a okay. painted option. Right. And then we have the carbon and aluminum option that you see here. And we actually even see, have a black anodized version, which you'll see on the production line later today. So all of this depth and detail, this is CNC'd in-house. It's all cnc in-house and then brushed and then we clear coat them or anodize them for depending on what your, your option selection is. And it's all hand brushed all in-house. I mean, it's, it's a dramatic, difference i mean you know obviously sometimes you'll see the front of a car and associate it as a face right yes and uh, you've given it new eyeballs right yeah and that's going to yeah. change the look and feel of it and entirely but also what is dramatic is having this aesthetic has brought it has modernized it to no end yeah regardless of the obviously i'm, I'm sure the light quality and projection and throw of light down the road is obviously enhanced mm -hmm. but the aesthetic of it just a game changer. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, and it, and it still flows. That, mm -hmm. That's the big thing. I, you mm -hmm. see a lot of headlights that sometimes are in the aftermarket industry where they sure. don't flow within yes. the body lines. Uh -huh. And this still really kind of flows with that. And even to the degree that if you guys notice that we still retain that shelf within the lens. Mm -hmm. And one of uh, another cool feature is we actually 3D print the bracket that attaches to oh, that wow. factory bucket and we bond on our lens here. So. Again, 
this lens is actually plastic mold injected, right. and then we put a hard coating on it. Um, but you still have that, again, shelf that you're so used to sure. on the original yeah, yeah. headlight of the car. So again, design elements to keep and retain, but still modernize. And again, that continuation into the 21st century of, of a car thought process. Yeah. So um, we first developed the headlights and after developing the headlights, we knew we needed to do something for the taillights. A completed taillight assembly here. And you, again, you see that modernization through the taillight. Uh, a lot of design elements through other cars um, that we wanted to have it still flow in the shape of the rear of the vehicle, um, being that we have those beautiful Coke-shaped fenders, mm -hmm. and we wanted that that curvature coming through your outside taillights and then going across. Um, again, it's that continuation of the modernization through LED technology. You've done a really cool job of keeping the the, the iconic 993 aesthetic, right? But yes. it's still in this contemporary style. It you is. really nailed that bit. You know? uh, yeah. Because when, that. when you're sort of far back from it, you immediately go 993, and that in itself is a trick. Yeah. But um, keep it contemporary as well. It's a really nice hybrid of the two. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. We we'll appreciate that. So, right. James, this is our CNC shop. So, we produce all of our aluminum components in house. We also do the wheels for our sister companies, Vorsteiner and Venom Rex. So, wow. Uh, this all here. All here. So a team will engineer, design, engineer, and then program a wheel for its first lathing profile. Uh -huh. So here's a forging. See the mass size of this? That's huge. I can barely oh, that's, lift that's it up. That's a solid ingot. Uh, like. That is a solid ingot of forged oh, aluminum. Man. That is dense. Wow. So at this stage, our team will actually put it onto the lathe right here, and it'll lay out the actual wheel profile and then the center bore of the wheel. So this is one of the new Vorsteiner designs. This is a 24 inch that they're running on the new G-Wagon. That's massive. Massive, massive, but that car is massive. Yeah, and the car's huge, but the intricacy of it. Beautiful, isn't it? Stunning, wow. So okay. this is a three axis mill. This mill will actually mill out the wheel profile. So the actual design of the wheel, mm -hmm. it'll mill out the f mounting flange and then all the back pocketing and the PCD. So as this machine runs, here's a finished part here. So wow. So, so all of this is designed, first of all, in-house. Correct. CAD. Yep. Programmed in. Yep. You guys do all the stages mm -hmm. and assembly mm -hmm. all under one roof. Yes. I've got two wheels here. So I want you to pick up this one first. So that is a 6061 completed forged aluminum face for mm -hmm. one of the Gunther Works 5 lugs vehicles. Right. Okay. So I want you to lift up that wheel that you see there. That's just ridiculous. That's so a joke, man. <laughs> we, significantly lighter. Wow. So we partnered up with Dymag out of the UK and Dymag's been producing uh, MotoGP wheels for a number of years. And right. they had recently come out with a new carbon line, a carbon barrel line for mm -hmm. uh, the streetcar side. And we were able to partner up with them to produce a magnesium carbon wheel. It's and like super trick. Super it's trick, super <laughs> trick. trick so we're able to get our final wheel weight to 15.9 pounds for both the front and the rear. Game it's changer. 1811, yeah. Like 18 by ridiculous. 11. Nothing. It's <laughs> unheard of in a production car um, in an 18 by 11 and an 18 by 13. Um, it's, it's revolutionary. So we're about 500 pounds lighter static weight due to the 110 pounds we're saving in rotational mass wise. So this is more craziness that, let me guess, you make in-house. We make in-house. Yeah, you do. Exactly. <laughs> make in-house. And that's, again, a big thing with us. But uh -huh. some of these items here, so this is our aero door handle. Stunning. Uh, pick this up. Oh, man, again. It's considerably lighter. So again. But you know what's great? Oftentimes, you can feel something that's light, and as a result, it can feel cheap, right? This feels the real deal. It's so nice. Yeah. Interior-wise, you look at all the buttons here. So everything you touch in the car is all CNC, nickel aluminum, plated. nickel plated. Man, it's like a hidden cave back here. Yeah, it it's kind of is, cave. yeah. Yeah, okay. it's very wow. hidden. Uh, and the rows of OE Porsche parts, our parts, and then our donor parts. But wow, it's huge. I want to first start off with our, our sub assembly. So wow. this is a front subframe pre-assembled off the car. We pre-assemble all of our sub components. 
off the car so when they're ready to be installed it's all plug and play right um, but one of the biggest features is our front subframes um, i think Amjad had touched on it when we were uh, doing the winchester video was mm -hmm how we actually move out the lower A-arms to the outer positions on the subframe. And Porsche had actually designed this for the 964 Cup Series and then also ran this on their 993 okay. yeah, Race yeah. Series as well. Uh, another component that's built by ERP Racing, again, our okay. suspension uh, engineer. Uh -huh. So these are based off of the 993 GT2 Evo uprights. A lot of guys run that there Evo upright. But okay. we've gone ahead and actually further developed it to our specifications. And right. so there's a lot of other cool tricks within this it's upright. Nice, man. Yeah, so that's yeah. all again, forged billet aluminum. Stunning. Yeah, all, all basically all your components I'm um, I'd have on my desk because like, you know, Little really, pieces. really fancy art yeah. pieces, yeah. expensive paperweights, <laughs> you know, things like that. When we talk about why we use the 993, and it really is this. Sure. Um, because the 964, uh -huh. um, again, didn't have a multi-link rear suspension, had a, a, a trailing arm mm. that uh, was familiar on the G-body stuff, where the 993 was very revolutionary in a multi-link rear suspension. It just gives you so much more adjustability uh, when setting up your suspension. So we've got some OE parts queued up here. Uh, what I wanna really kind of feature is the engine and transmission here. So uh, you'll notice there are four digits on there followed by an additional numbers on it. So the four represents the last four of the VIN number, and then the numbers after that is the engine and trans number. So we really focus making sure that the engine and trans match the VIN number of the vehicle. So it's always matching numbers that goes out of the car and back into the car. And one of the only things that we don't do in-house is our engine and transmission building. Those mm -hmm. are sent up to Rossport Racing. Essentially, we still utilize the factory transmission housing and then okay. the factory block as well. Right. But every other component on the engine and trans is all brand spanking new. Uh -huh. What I wanted to show you guys is the OE parts that we still retain in the car. So every nice. nut, every washer is brand new in the vehicle. From Porsche. From Porsche. This is a so, Porsche SKU. That's a Porsche SKU. Look at that Correct. right there. There it is. Yeah. Awesome. So this whole aisle is all Porsche parts. So roughly about 20% of the components in the car are brand new factory Porsche stuff. Yeah. Like I said, we try to plan. What you see uh -huh. here is roughly about six cars worth of inventory. Okay. Uh, but we try to order up to about 15 to 24 cars a year. Wow. So, and so you can see the assemblies of our remastered Gunther Works. Now this is just unicorn cave. It's yeah. It's phenomenal, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah, it's heaven. <laughs> it's, it's heaven. It's cool to see all of the different specs, assuming these are going to different parts of the world. Yeah, it really is kind of fun to see, and it is that road, like kind of map of everything, right. um, where, again, we've got cars that are going to Hong Kong that are on the production line. Uh -huh. You'll see these three are all right-hand drives, and these are kind of my last of my coupe production okay. of the 25 series. So coupes are all sold out, right? Coupes are all sold out, and yeah. they're actually finishing production. Uh, our first Speedster is going through testing right now, right. and that'll have delivery in September where we'll then produce the 25 run of Speedsters and then on to Project Tornado. Wow. This is a really pretty color. Wow. So it's hard to tell, but it's a, it's green. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a metallic green with gold flake in it that when you have it outside, Really it pops. will really pop. So because every component on the car is carbon, we're able to expose some of that carbon throughout the paint job. So. Right. On this particular car, the hood, the roof, and the deck lid have an exposed stripe going across. What Steven's working on right now is we have a seven panel carbon flooring kit that gets installed into the vehicles. And so it's got the center console, uh, the side rockers or seals, and then there's two floor pans that get sit inside, and then a uh, top and bottom rear seat delete. So we'll pre-fit those into each car. And each car is slightly different. I mean, they just come naturally from the factories. Mm -hmm. So we have to hand trim each panel to right. line up perfectly, a giant puzzle in a sense, that each gap is exactly fitted perfectly. Earlier on when we were back at chassis prep, you see how smooth and clean it all is now. And, and everything being shaved off of it. So yeah. as you look, we have our reservoirs mounted to the frame rails. Uh, you notice, you see two wires running off the strut towers right there. Right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we partner, JRZ, uh, JRZ Dynamic Suspension, mm -hmm. um, is something that they just came out with. So 
Uh, Jersey's based out of Austria. We've been working with them for a long time now. And this is their new three-way adjustable electronic dampening suspension. So those leads that are running off of the shock body lead uh -huh. to a electronic valve that is built into the actual shock here. And that valve is controlled by an ECU. Let me grab that ECU here. It's super trick, huh? It's so the ECU <laughs> has a built-in gyroscope that gets mounted in the okay. vehicle. Right. And there's an algorithm that's built into the actual module and it's all app based. So you have an app on your phone uh -huh. or on the iPad in the new Project Tornado yeah. and it will connect to the ECU, which allows you to automatically adjust the suspension as you're driving. So you adjust the rebound, the compression, mm -hmm. you can adjust the dip and dive, all based all off, the the, all from the app. And it all runs yeah. to this essentially ECU that gets mounted into it. Another little cool feature on this is that, so each client gets to spec out their colors. Now that's cool. So that's, we've done anodized <laughs> orange really nice. to silver. You'll see red on the production line. Wow. Different color knobs. That's so that gorgeous. little detail and the customization of their suspension. So we want to show you some of the other components. So okay. as the guys are waiting for their engine to arrive in from Rossport, we've actually queued up our uh, exhaust system. So the headers are all custom made specifically mm -hmm. for us. They're all valves. So yep. like we had spoke that the uh, support button will actually open up the valving. And we still utilize a 997 GT3 exhaust. Looks box. familiar. It is. Right. It is. Okay. Uh, the beauty of this is that it has double baffling within the system. So okay. again, because we're able to use that valving, we're able to use the valving that was originally designed by Porsche mm -hmm. uh, and still utilize that. Now, a very cool modern feature is the exhaust tip. So I think you guys touched on it maybe in another video. Yeah. But these exhaust tips. Um, are very reminiscent of other kind of generations. We took some styling cues, but the cool thing is the production. Listen to me, <laughs> what I tell you. <laughs> I, know, I know we've been saying it's hard to pick up, you know, weight on film, but you know, you can kind of get the idea That's that I'm, yes, I'm moving this around as yeah. if it's like plastic or something. So this is this 3D printed in Canal, right? That's correct. It takes 21 hours to make it. It's Crikey. the same company that produces these for SpaceX. So SpaceX uses this on wow. their rockets for some of the exhaust. Yeah, you're not gonna get, be getting shapes like that any other way, really. No. You know, all weight like that. That's very special. It's one of the big things on an air-cooled uh, Porsche 911 is cooling. Um, sure. Getting the oil as cool as possible. So what we've actually done is we've incorporated the two oil coolers and have rotated them 90 degrees. So on a factory car, they sit inboard right against the, right. the actual frame rail. Yeah. Because we're three inches wider on each corner, we're able to actually to. rotate them out 90 degrees. Very cool. And so now you have true airflow through the Directly bumper through it. and then exit out the wheel arch here. So Amazing. we're able to run, we've run 12 hours at a track day yeah. and not, not once has the car missed a beat and it just keeps going. So it's quite impressive. And then all the oil lines, every soft oil lines through the car is all dash 16 AN fitting lines. So wow. everything yeah. has been increased in volume to keep the that oil flow. as cool as possible. So this is the exposed carbon that you were talking about? This is the exposed carbon. In, in our words, we call it the exoskeleton. Okay. So the exoskeleton is the exposed carbon body. And like right. I said, it takes roughly four additional months to produce an exoskeleton <laughs> chassis. Um, and as you see, the carbon weave matches. Uh -huh. So each panel, yes. as it's laid up, we got a thing about it, it continues right. flowing through it. I like how you've blended in the, the, the original structure of the chassis and with the carbon roof. Correct. It's a nice finish. It's a, yeah, the fade out. Yeah. Um, and, and like mentioned, this kind of really showcases where it's still structurally steel. Uh -huh. So your A, B, and C pillars are still structurally steel in the cars, but every other com uh, component on the body is carbon. What an effect. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Crikey, it's like something off an off offshore powerboat. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> So this is actually, this is the oil return line wow. that comes off the engine and feeds back into the so oil. some serious flow then. Some serious flow. Um, wow. We've actually seen this flex close to six inches as joking? it's driving it's going? Yeah, this is one of the, the biggest components we actually developed. You see all the additional oil lines. And then even to, this is our HLS line. So for okay. the noseless system, uh -huh. this runs to the hydraulic pump that's so built in. Braided high it's pressure all, line. Uh, again, braided high pressure line. 
We we utilize a KW nose lift system. Okay. However, some of the components we've even gone above and beyond to upgrade through it. Again, here's right. the heart. Just, just come and see this. I mean, we've just had a glance at what the the original looks like when you've removed it from, I guess, ground zero over there. Uh, in in anybody's world, would you say that was the same thing? No, no, yeah. And, and <laughs> you know. where's the engine out of? What, 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 yeah. what modern Porsche? You, know, uh -huh. you guys get it out of? Yeah. So, what other components have you adapted? To it. So to it's got individual throttle bodies. Uh -huh. It runs a 996 GT3 intake plenum. Um, one big feature that you're missing right here is it doesn't have the AC compressor and your power steering pump on the engine. Those are actually moved up to the front trunk. Right. Um, in doing so, typically those systems run about 30 horsepower to power them. Now it's only about seven horsepower. Wow. So that additional 23 is directly going to the tires. So that's again, cool. It, nice. Any way we can improve yeah. the performance aspect of it. It's also tidied up the engine bay a little bit more as well, right? Yeah, yeah. that's that visual cool. aspect of yeah. it all. There's a jewel in it, isn't it? It, it looks, is. It looks stunning. It, it really, really um, is. On to this. So it's around about 435 horsepower, is it? That's correct. Like that. So it wasn't long ago that, you know, the internet engineers would have told you 100 horsepower per liter out of an air cooled was maybe impossible yeah or at least extremely yeah, difficult extremely difficult and you've done it you know? we have yeah. we have and it's reliable sure uh, that's it yeah you know as you've seen the progression of uh -huh. what subcomponents go in to support the engine yeah um it's reliability is what's really key i mean you can make uh I, you know there's larger air cooled numbers out there but the mm -hmm. reliability might yeah, be questionable so yeah you know our guys have been really proven and tested actually a little more about raw sport racing so uh -huh. he races his baja 964 uh, down in the norad um which is a huge racing series down in baja okay He'll run about 500 miles through the desert running an engine it's very similar to what you see here so so it's endurance tested endurance yeah. testing through cool. punishment of dirt sand dust running through this thing and he's won his class for the past couple of years so Fantastic. it's pretty incredible what absolutely thing. pretty incredible this car also has those ccmr rotors with the brembo gtr calipers again nickel plated as well so just to clarify you know when we say ccmr this is not to be confused with a carbon ceramic brake yeah so ccbs are yeah. what you find on a typical sure. uh, modern tick, day tick box standard option these days on exactly. most supercar sports yeah. cars these are akin to, I know when the, the McLaren Senna launched, there was a load of hype around those discs uh, because no one believed that they were, they were eight months each to make in terms of manufacture cure time. Yep. This is a similar process, right? Very similar process to what's up. What it's basically F1 tech. Exactly. In a disc. Yep. On a 993. On a 993. These boys. Yeah, pretty incredible. <laughs> it's very pretty, cool. Pretty incredible. Very, very cool. Pretty wow. incredible. Wow. I love the finish on those Brembos. It's, what is that? It's, it's just it's nickel plating. Okay. And again, it's for weight reduction. So really? paints typically paints thicker, so they actually Brembo saw that doing it in nickel finish was actually a lighter process. Um and then it holds up better compared to the paint stuff. I mean, it really is formula mindset, really. You know, yeah. when you're shaving grams through paint, you're in a different bracket. It is. You're in a different thing. Yeah. Okay. Very so, cool. Uncle, let's do a full walk down. So Oh, wow. Again, our full front sub assembly, the subframe all mounted in there with those custom uprights designed. It's nice you can still see the Porsche A-arms. This is cool. So this is your JRZ suspension here. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, and you can see all, the throw from the box. Yep, the throw nice. from the box, all your brake lines, fuel lines. So typically the fuel filters are mounted inside the engine bay. We relocate that under the car so okay. again, that clean and shaved look. There's that big AN line, <laughs> that return line yeah. running off the engine. Uh, we run a mil spec engine harness that has a custom bracket that runs into the harness or into the ECU in the car. Mm -hmm. So if we ever need to service it and you have to pull the engine, you're just disconnecting from here, not pulling apart your interior. But yeah, you nice. see how clean okay. the engine case is. Again, the cylinder barrels to the heads. So the case is the original case. That's the original case. So this is the original part number that would have come on this car. Yeah, same thing with the transmission casing. So uh -huh. it's still a G50 six-speed transmission. Um, however, the gearing first through 
fifth, you notice is much shorter. Sure. Uh, and then six is an overdrive gear, so you have that more spirited driving. You right. always feel like you're right in the correct RPMs yes. of it, yeah, and that's yeah. really done to the gearing and then the limited slip differential that's also built into this. Once we've done the nut and bolt inspections on the cars, uh -huh. then they get sent over to alignment, and then okay. we start our EOL process. So, so is alignment final, final stage? It is the final stage. It's one of the yeah. final stages here on the assembly line before we start our testing. So you putting at this stage operational fluids into it? Everything. So we've already okay. started the car. It's yeah. already got its full interior into the vehicle. Okay. We've done a end of line checklist, making sure it, you saw all the torque strikes on all the bolts. So everything's been torqued to yeah. specification. At this point, this is when we'll actually start the alignment process and what we're, our end of line. Um, we put about 1,000 miles on the vehicles before delivering them to the clients. Really? Yeah, wow. and we go okay. through, That's It's cool. uh, there's five different people that actually sign off on it wow. um, through each of that, and then it, it breaks down, those 1,000 miles are broken into six drives. So what James is working on right now is we're fortunate enough to be running the inaugural hill climb at Laguna Seca this upcoming week at Monterey. So. This was our Speedster we released last year at Monterey. Mm -hmm. um, this is a homage to the Speedsters of the yesteryears. Actually, it's quite a testament in itself to the subframes and the bushings and suspension that it can run slicks. You know? Yeah. Because the, the added load that comes from a slick in itself is pretty substantial. It's pretty substantial. So that's, a, that's yeah. very cool. Pretty I tell you, it's not many cars or certain many, many cars that you can buy today yeah. that would allow you to fit a slick. When I say allow you, if something went wrong on it, yeah. warranty-wise, yeah. they'd be like, no. no. <laughs> you know, yeah. It wasn't designed to deal with that load. And, and one of the yeah. options on our selection process of, do you yeah. want slicks with is your a car? Slick? Is yeah. it really? Yeah. How so, cool? That's yeah, there's, very there's cool. There's a track pack is what we, and it, it involves a, a roll cage and you can do slicks and different brake packages. I love that. So it's pretty I cool. I love that. Yeah, so. Well, listen. Best of luck with the hill climb. Thank you. Congratulations Appreciate on you. everything so Thank far. You. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you guys for the last few days. We've got plenty of Gunther content coming. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see Turbo turn its first wheel. It'll Great, be cool. we're excited. Thanks, Nick. Thank Cheers, you. Buddy. Thanks. That was a serious tour. Honestly, what you've got Thanks. here is, is really special. So we're back with Pete. If you watched the Turbo tour um, in the previous video, we started with Pete. And we thought it would be great to sort of break down a client side of the journey, right? Mm -hmm. um, what yeah. we've just seen is unreal. I mean, that side of it's endless. Run us through what a client would experience. Stage one of their journey, mm -hmm. we would ask them to like now start picking out the paint and the interiors and the options and so forth. So we've got this, the one-tenth scale speedster model here just sort of to uh, create some inspiration. It's done in grayscale to sort of go, hey, okay, it's a blank slate, and what are the colors and the options that inspire you? Well, that's cool, then, so, so you've spoken to them in advance to get a feel of maybe what they want, yeah. so you can present them with some options which might appeal in advance. We do, we do. So client, we like, I like dark green, light green, gold and blue, so mm -hmm. we would have them pre-sprayed out so we can give them options. It's a nice touch. And, and all of this paint is, is literally scratch so these paints don't exist we would develop the paint in you know in-house ourselves because we do all of our paints mm -hmm. uh, we don't typically take a paint formula that's already existing mm -hmm. uh, we want everything to be completely unique and we actually give the client uh, the paint code okay when they get the delivery of the car and that paint code is you know a secret to formula to the customer like people would ask us hey can I get the color code for that? And we sure. say, you have to ask the client. Right, know? sure. So we can right. go out to the uh, exoskeleton and check that out. Do it. Okay, so this is, this is the exposed carbon car or the exoskeleton finish. Yeah. This I mean, particular commission is um, actually for uh, a customer in Hong Kong. It's uh, one of the five right-hand drive cars that are going out to Hong Kong. As you can see here, you can see the weave, um, how the doors and the rear quarter panels and the side skirts are all sort of aligned. Yeah, I mean, all of the split panels and join lines, yeah. the weave of the, the carbon continues perfectly. Right. And the whole exoskeleton concept came where, um, you know, we got asked by a lot of clients, you know, what part of the exterior is carbon fiber? And um, yeah. there came a point where <laughs> we were getting tired of answering that question, saying, you know what, we're not going to paint it, and we're just going to clear coat everything. So you can see that it's really just the uh, the front and rear pillars mm -hmm. that are left in the original steel form. Yeah. And on top of all of this, you also have a sort of, for want of a better term, 
sort of central symmetrical stitch line, like right. join line. Yeah, that's... It's like a, like, like sort of herringbone meets, is, you know, up yeah, the middle there. That's, that's what the English call the herringbone uh, weave, and it goes all the way across um, the front bumper, the hood, the roof, all the way to the ducktail and the rear bumper. Wow. So it's a split all the way across. One of the things we do, because we only have um, 25 of these coupes, is um, we like to kind of give each car its own fingerprint. Mm -hmm. And sometimes um, we can insist with coming up with names that inspire them. But mm -hmm. typically, I like to get a customer story, something that comes out of something personal. Mm -hmm. This particular car is called Carbon Elements. So usually on the door sills, you'll see the name of the car. Right. And right here on the side of the seats, you'll see further personalization where uh, typically the name of the client is actually engraved into the side of the door. My, one of my biggest pet peeves um, getting out of sports seats is the side bolsters. Mm -hmm. You get in and out and after three, four months, they get leather bolster wear. Sure, jeans so, stain. <laughs> because of my, my OCD, my personal OCD, uh -huh. we've designed a outer carbon bridge where when you get in and out of the car, uh, there's two different um, benefits of having a carbon outer bridge. Uh -huh. One, it basically acts like an anchor to go in and out, so you can use that to put weight in, uh -huh. not to crush the bolster sure. and create a lot of wear and tear. Great idea. Yeah. It really it's, is. It's really sort of a, a, a push point to sure. ingress and egress out of the seats. Yeah, when you say it, it sounds so obvious, but until you see it, you're like, yeah, yeah no yeah. brainer. So James, another unique feature that a lot of people don't see um, typically in photos or on a website or social media is the uh, internal headliner, the Alcantara headliner. And you can see that we've actually um, caved in both the, the uh, driver and the passenger side seat. So we've maximized the uh, headroom on there. Uh, so that customers that are wearing uh, crash helmets mm -hmm. have maximum clearance up there. So you effectively have like a reverse double bubble. Yes. The double bubbles on the inside, inside rather yes. than the outside, yeah. right? You don't typically see that in cars. It's no. usually one, um, uh -huh. one surface. Uh, oh, that's very cool. So nice do touch. That. Yeah. To Great function. touch. Yeah. All right. So uh, it's been amazing. We've been with Gunther Works basically the last four days, haven't we? Mm -hmm. And that's been supreme. Uh, we've seen the turbo. Like I said, link in the description b below to the full walk and talk of this car. We feel really fortunate to be able to see it in advance and share it with these guys. And uh, I can't wait to see where this goes and where your brand goes, mate. Right. So congrats on everything. It's we'll been, see you guys it's in a been few fantastic. Days. You will do. Cheers. Thanks.